Hello again, Lefty. Uh, I'm just going to show you my little camping setup, which I never get to use because I never go camping. Um, I'd like to, but anyway. So the stove is inside the pot and it fits perfectly. So that's the Trangia stove. Um, I've kind of unscrewed all this in preparation, so I've got one hand on the camera. So this is called the Open Spirit Stove, I think. And um, that's obviously the Trangia burner inside. And I, it's not very popular because I think people don't... I don't think it's very windproof. But I think it works fantastic. Um, and the pot obviously sits on top. How cool. And it all fits in the one thing and it's, it doesn't rattle around too much. You could probably stick some paper towel in there to eliminate any rattle so it doesn't annoy you when you're walking along if it's in your backpack or camping gear or whatever. So um, I'm going to light this stove <coughs> and um, one thing I do recommend buying and that's the actual proper um, bottle is like a f anti flame retardant thing like the flame can't go back inside this bottle if it accidentally catches on fire. So that's probably the only thing that I'd actually splash out on. This is only the small one. I think it's 500 mil or something. You can get the liter one, but you, know, you don't need you don't need that much. And it only pours when you push the button down. So that should be enough, more than enough. And then you just screw that back down. That locks it in. A couple more taps just to get the excess out of there, turn it around, same deal. Um, and then you're right. So, doing this in my lounge room, so probably not the safest place to do it. Um, this is a flint gun I got off a friend of mine, and it's made in the US. And it sends a spark away. Um, I think it needs a new flint, so hopefully, I haven't started this with this before. I usually use just a, a, a lighter or a match or something, but... Um, I'll hold that there and see if we can light this up. Yeah, I don't think it's going to work. Alright, I'll pause this and come back. First time I've used that, so um, <sighs> could be the last. There you go. Uh, I'm going to try and find something else to light this with. I'll be back. All right, back with the lighter. Back with the bic. Now, this is a little more dangerous because uh, I've got to kind of get in there with it. So, hopefully, the fumes going up the side can catch on fire, which are not. Alright. Okay. Smothered it out with my hand. Hurt like a bitch. Okay, so this thing's gonna play around for a little bit. The flame will die down a little bit. And um, eventually the holes at the side will kind of make a flame. Eventually. I kind of see it happening now. It might be a little bit hard to catch on camera. I can see the flames quite well, but it doesn't look like the camera's picking it up very well. Well, you know, I can feel the heat from up here. There's a lot of heat coming from it. A lot of heat. I mean, I can't hold my hand there very long. So, I've got everything ready. Put the container on, the pot, and... Sorry. 
Nice and water. I'm going to cook some noodles with a couple of dim sims or whatever these things are called. These are frozen so they're going to act like ice cubes so I'm going to wait until the water is very hot. And uh, I'm not going to bore you with it boiling but uh, I'll get back to you when it is boiling. We can throw the noodles in see how, thing we, how it works and I'll time it too. I'll be back. Alrighty, it's been about two minutes. Some little bubbles in there. It's pretty hot. Probably been less than two minutes actually. What I've decided to do is these dim sims are frozen. I'm going to throw them in now because uh, I don't like overcooking noodles because everyone knows they just go shit when you overcook noodles. So I'm going to throw these in. They're going to act like ice cubes. The water's going to take a little longer to boil. These things can cook for ages and um, they won't fall apart or anything. So I'll throw those in now. See that um, boiling away pretty well. Here's the first one. Whoa. Got these from Aldi. You get like a pack of, uh, what is it, 30, I think, for 10 bucks. They're absolutely awesome. They're really tasty, and you can boil them up, you can steam them, fry them, whatever you want to do. I think they taste best steamed, but um, we'll see how they go in the noodles here. And we'll wait till this is boiling, and then I'm going to throw in the two-minute noodles. I've got different, uh, different flavour here. This is like a hot and spicy one that I got from another packet ages ago. Just had sitting in the fridge. Um, these are just Aldi cheapo ones, but um, yeah, they did the job. And I've got one egg which I'll crack in before we're done and kind of cook that, poach it a bit, I suppose, in the soup. Um, the this knife, fork, and spoon I got out of a. Um, Oh, I think it's a Russian or a Yugoslavian um, mess kit. And um, you'll have to trust me when I tell you they all nest together. But um, it's really good quality steel. It's really heavy and durable and they're really good. You can find them on eBay. The knife is, is awesome. It's got a, uh, a can opener and that's a bottle opener. And obviously the knife, the knife goes to a point which I suppose you could sharpen if you wanted to, I don't know, use it as a jabber jabber. It's just a butter knife though basically. A little some serrations on there for cutting steak but they're, they're smoothed off. So I don't think that'd be any good for cutting steak. You'd have to sharpen it, which you could do. But the, sp <clears throat> the spoon's good. It's really deep dish spoon. It's really good. And the fork is really sharp as well. No problem picking up food with that. I really like it. I wish I had more of those. My drawer was full of those. I'd be happy. Anyway, I'll be back when uh, this starts boiling. Alrighty -o. It's heating up good now. It's pretty hot. So, I'm going to throw the flavour in first. Um, get the soup all flavoured up. And uh, what have we got here? Some chilli paste they call it. It's not that hot. I love this stuff. This is uh, these are out of the noodles that Trident, Trident. Um, oh, what do you call it? Hot and spicy Thai noodles. They're not very spicy. Really, really tasty. So this is boiling now. You can hear it. And that's kicking ass. Now what I might do is maybe turn it down a bit. And how you do that, you need two hands too. So if you haven't seen one of these before, this is just a lid, and you can put it on and regulate how much heat you want to come out of it. So I'm going to do that now. I'll do it off camera so I don't cause a catastrophe and um, burn my house down. Okay, I've got some flame coming out the side here. But yes, I have put that on and it's cut the flame in half or less than. So it looks like it's still going to boil. But that's okay. Smelling fantastic. I'm going to put the noodles in in a sec.
very hard to do this stuff with one hand that's probably annoying the hell out of you um, okay so what I'll do next is throw the noodles in and um, when it starts kind of simmering again I'm pretty hungry This pot is really good. It's really sturdy. You know, you can, it holds a fair bit as well. There's the flame coming out of the bottom. And it just I just love how it all packs down into that one little package. You can throw that in your bag or or whatever. Going camping. What I what I have done, uh, last time I did um, go away for a couple of nights, so I, I took this, I didn't end up using it, but it was in there anyway in case whatever. It rained or we had to set up you know, set up a, um, a shelter or something, we couldn't use the fire. Nine times out of ten, you just use the campfire to cook on, and that's the best way to go. If it starts <clears throat> pissing down rain, you have to get underneath the tarp or something like that, um, at least you can use this. And um, I went to Stewart's Brook in New South Wales to uh, do some shooting hunting and uh, we actually reheated some Indian food from the night before which I put into these um, smaller containers of these about half the size two separate ones I froze um, you can put meals in these and freeze them uh, and that's what we used and I just used this little thing to heat it up it worked perfectly I was really happy about it um, probably because I was eating that's when I'm my most happiest all right so I'm going to wait for this uh, to heat up again, throw the noodles in, and we'll crack an egg in it, and then um, we'll be done. Noodles are in. And they won't take long. They won't take long at all. If you've never cracked an egg into um, boiling noodles before, you should give it a go. So um, probably about maybe 30 seconds before you, uh, you're you going to take the noodles off the stove, crack an egg in it. And, um, you know, obviously if you're going to eat it with the soup. And it's just awesome. It really takes it to another level, throwing an egg in there. They're not just boring noodles anymore. They're... Um, you know, you can turn it into a meal. So a couple of these frozen dim sims, you could throw in, you know, you could have some carrots or vegetables, you know, whatever. I don't know what you put in noodles, soup, maybe carrots and celery, maybe. You could have some of that stuff cut up ready and throw them in as well. So you can kind of get a decent meal out of just a, you know, pack of two minute noodles. But the dim sims and the egg will, um, will get you where you want to go. Okay, so I had to take the ring off to give it a little extra boost. I'm about to crack the egg in there. The noodles have been in for a little bit. Um, now, just in case you haven't used these stoves before, that gets hot, completely, really crazy hot. So if you've got tongs or um, pliers or you know, something, um, and it stays hot too. It's not like, you know, aluminium or something where it'll lose its heat pretty quickly. That's brass. I think that's some kind of steel. And it retains its heat, so be careful with that. I'll crack the egg. I can't do that with uh, one hand without making a mess. So I'll be back again. How exciting. Cooked noodles. Okay, so the flame went out. I went to crack an egg in this glass, and the flame went out. So the first thing you do is smother the flame, because... You can't see it, so there could be a really, really tiny flame in there. So you put that on there, leave it for 30 seconds. You don't want to be putting fuel in there while there's a flame on there. Very silly thing to do. So um, that's been on there for about 30 seconds. I'm going to pour some more fuel in. this again get those noodles back on the boil okay gonna wait a few moments more um, it's all back on the boil I'm gonna start boiling in a sec I 
can see it already moving in there. I've stirred it around a bit more. And basically all you do is throw an egg in and kind of let it let it sit there for a bit. You don't want to stir it around too much. You kind of just want to you make a little kind of a hole in there like that. And if it boils too much, it'll break the egg up too. So just make a little bit of a hole. Boil the egg in like that. thing really does turn out good you can see it you can see it down in there I don't want to break the yolk just let the egg do its thing pick it up with a spoon a bit and have a look yeah there you go see beautiful and you could probably hook into that now, but I'll give it a bit longer to cook the yolk and a little bit. We're almost done. Next time you'll see this meal will be in a bowl, because uh, I'm not in the bush, I'm in my lounge room. So I'm not going to eat like a bushman, but I don't have to. But I just wanted to show you how this worked and how it all packs down and how you can actually cook a decent meal. Um, you know, all you need is a flat surface. Um, and uh, yeah that's it really simple really easy and uh, I love this um, okay so I've smothered the flame just one more thing to smother the flame you use that top okay the one that we use to regulate the flame um, do not put this directly on top there's a rubber o-ring inside to stop the uh, the fuel from spilling when you're transporting it don't throw that straight on top the brass is very hot it'll melt this o-ring immediately and you'll have to buy some more o-rings which you can buy they do kind of disintegrate over time but you want it to last as long as you can so don't be silly remember that's got rubber in it don't just throw that on alrighty job done noodles soup dim sim and an egg cooked just perfectly I like them runny. Check this out. Oh. Alright, I'm going to hook in. Hope you guys got something out of it. I got a meal. See you later. Hello, hello. So, um, dinner is done. I've uh, cleaned everything. Um, this is the knife, fork, spoon, all packed down. Um, really compact. It's, it's got a bit of weight to it, but it's a, it's a quality stuff um, I'm just burning off the excess alcohol in there I could pour it out but I'll just burn it off it makes it really warm and you could use one of these as just a you know maybe for tent in a tent if you're game if it's cold or something you can get some really good uh, heat off this as soon as you spill it you know your history it'll just start a fire everywhere so just be careful and um, to put it out use this one I think I one time in the video I put it out with that and then I told everyone not to so you know don't always listen to me actually probably best off never to listen to me but um, you put it out like that um, with this ring across so it's kind of hard because you don't have you know that leverage just me hovering that over there made it very hot so this stuff heats up really quickly um, but what I'll do is just let it let it burn off. It won't be long. It's there wasn't much left in there. So that's about it. And uh, this is the only knife sharpener I've got. I've got no idea how to sharpen knives. Uh, I've never really took an interest in it. I've only ever just bought things like this, like these easy, quick and easy, uh, you know, pull through knife sharpeners. So I'm going to actually try and do it on that. Um, this knife here because there is a bit of an edge but it's only a one-sided edge so maybe it'll sharpen it up if it does then that's an easy way but I'm not going to go all out and get it sharpened or anything like that that's just craziness uh, for what it's for what it's worth this flame is dying down a little bit the alcohol is no longer in the bottom so once you 
can no longer see the alcohol in the bottom of it that's when you know that there there is still alcohol in the wick which is inside the walls of the the, the ring it goes all the way down so that'd probably be a good time to um, put it out ah, there you go and it's that easy ish um, but once that's done leave it on there for a while because this goes on first and that's got the rubber ring so we'll just wait a little while till that's cooled down this will then go on top it'll screw on it's got thread and then that just clips over the top so uh i'll do it. all right this is how it packs down uh, let me move it away so that obviously goes in there i don't know if you could actually turn that over use a larger pan or a pot on it maybe don't think it matters all right that goes in there and that in there uh, yeah you could fill this up with different things like your lighter and whatever but I've never bothered about any of that um, there is a little bit of a rattle not that it matters too much because I don't I don't think you'll hear it once in your once it's in your backpack but um, throw a bit of paper in there and there's a paper tear probably almost eliminate that so this goes over like so really quick and easy with two hands and that's it so yeah it's not rattling at all there you go you can kind of hear that but um, yeah like I said I don't really care about making noise that's pretty good I love it um, if I could somehow fit those in there then you could kind of have your whole cooking and eating system in the one thing but that doesn't matter that's tiny as well just throw that throw that in the bag with it so that is it and um i guess this is now the end of the video thank you done